Influenza and lung disease can literally take your breath away. Tonight, On Call examines these potentially deadly conditions. The doctors are on call now. Funding for this program is provided in part by... Avera is a proud sponsor of On Call on South Dakota Public Television. And by... The South Dakota Foundation for Medical Care, the Medicare Quality Improvement Organization for South Dakota. Additional funding provided by Dakota Care, the Brookings Health System, Regional Health, the South Dakota American College of Physicians, and Swiftel Communications. Post captioning for On Call is provided by the generous support of Avera, the Brookings Health System and Fishback Financial Corporation. There's the, the bell. And which was healthier, the yogurt and the bagel? I'm going to start by measuring the size of it. You could also add grilled chicken to this recipe. Whoa, 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 keep pushing. Pull red handle to open bag. This is the season not only for the celebration of religious holidays, but also the season for the common occurrence of lung disease. Human populations all seem to have an annual coming and going of this respiratory type, mostly viral process. We have all struggled with congested airways, excessive mucus, painful coughing, difficulty breathing, and trouble sleeping from an epidemic form of a viral illness which, for which there seems no good treatment. This has already started, and in the following three months that we expect a plethora of common colds, influenzas, and pneumonias to descend upon our clinics and hospitals. Indeed, it seems that this time of year, those of significant age with compromised health are the most at risk to have a simple cold evolve into life-threatening pneumonia. But you don't have to be old or with a chronic condition to become infected with a respiratory illness that makes you feel lousy. <laughs> Here to help us learn uh, how the cold and influenza has and will affect us this year and with the recommendations designed to prevent such epidemics is Lon Keitlinger, the South Dakota State Epidemiologist. Good evening, Rick. Good evening, Lon. And also with us in the studio tonight is Dr. Brian Hurley, pulmonologist from Avera, who will share his professional life experience of treating people with lung disease and infections. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, Rick. So let's start with uh, you, Brian. You, you are a in pulmonary internist. Now, what is that? It's uh, a specialty that deals with diseases of the chest. Uh, specialty internal medicine, we don't operate. Uh, we deal with folks that have respiratory problems, from asthma to emphysema to uh, other illnesses that affect the lungs. Right, and this evening we're gonna talk about <coughs> lung disease. Yes. And we can go anywhere you wanna go on this. And so it, this will be good. Yeah. I'm gonna invite you at home to call any and all questions about colds, the flu, and lung disease. <coughs> the number is 1-888-376-6225. Again, that number is 1-888-376-6225. Lon, uh, you're the state epidemiologist. Tell us a little bit about what that is. Well, whereas Dr. Hurley's the specialist, I am the generalist. And we track all diseases in the state. Uh, in the summer, I work on summer diseases, uh, Salmonella, E. coli, West Nile, what's ever spe uh, sweeping the state and the country. Now this time of year, we're just gearing up uh, for the influenza epidemic to hit again. And what, what, uh, what gave you the credentials to be a person that's interested in this? I mean, what was your training? What's your experience? Well, I have a PhD in epidemiology. Uh, so I, I do public health. So we see the whole population of the state as our patient, not an individual patient, not at a hospital. It's public health. So it's Dr. Keilinger. Where did you get your training? I went to Tulane University in New Orleans, and then I did my PhD in Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina. So you, 
you're all on the south and the you, uh, east coast, so you got to South Dakota because that's where those people go to come from, or uh, no, no, I'm a native South Dakota. Oh, you are. Yeah, I was just out of the state for 20 years, oh. Oh. traveling here and there, so I'm back in South Dakota again. Where'd you can't? Where'd you come from? Selby, South Dakota. Selby, in, and my mother's still up there. So your mom's in Selby. Yes, she is. And then, but in the meantime, you spent some time in Madagascar. That, that's right. What, I, was, what was that experience? Well. I guess my real training is in parasitology, the worms, the uh, flukes, malaria, diseases like that. So that's my, my first love. But fortunately, we don't have many of those in South Dakota, so now we do the South Dakota diseases. Yeah, we have some parasites here, though. Uh, very few, very Not, few. It, boring topic for South Dakota. <laughs> so, Brian, you're originally from? Canton area, Lake County. So, a Canton boy. Yes, sir. And you did your training where? Uh, I was uh, did med school in South Dakota, and I went to Mayo Clinic for training. Ah, so a Mayo Clinic trained guy. So, well, um, I haven't seen a ton of uh, colds or influenza. I've seen some. Yeah. How, what's your experience been? I so haven't far? seen hardly any yet. It's yeah. kind of quiet. It's kind of quiet. Lon, what's the, well, what are the numbers? Well, we're tracking them. Uh, we just uh, went almost a month with no confirmed influenza in South Dakota. Today we announced one. Uh, a couple rapid tests positive, two, hosp two new hospitalizations this past week, but it's been very quiet, not only in South Dakota, but also nationally. It's where the tip of the iceberg goes. Well, at? mark my word, influenza will hit, and it usually hits with a bang. So in the next couple weeks, it's going to go up, 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 and then if typical, right around mid-February, late February, it'll peak and go down. Okay. Well, there's an old joke that says, if you have a cold, hope that it turns into pneumonia because they can't cure a common cold, but they can treat pneumonia. <laughs> joke. Bad joke. I don't like it. <laughs> In reality, though, pneumonia is painful. It can be debilitating and potentially fatal. You really don't want it. I was feeling bad for a couple of days, and then it got, I went to work the one morning, and, it, uh, and I just knew I needed to get something for it. It's almost like a claustrophobic. <laughs> it's uh, this kind of panic when you, uh, you can't get enough oxygen in there. It's just an ugly feeling. I had uh, pneumonia. It was in the right lung. Uh, I first was feeling bad and I, out of breath, and uh, so I went into the doctor's office and I was given a couple of shots and then uh, z pack and sent home. So when I went in there that day, uh, then he put me in the hospital. So I was there for five days to uh, get me all fixed up. Almost five years ago, I had had pneumonia. Um, and I was in there for about this, uh, approximately the same amount of time. This time I was surprised that I, that I got sick. I just had a flu shot uh, two weeks before. And uh, but apparently the flu shot doesn't help with pneumonia. <laughs> they put me on oxygen for one thing, so that really helped out. And, uh, and then uh, it just uh, gave me medicine. Most of it was uh, through the IV. I put an IV drip and I believe they had given me a couple of steroid shots. Too. I took one full week off once I got out of the hospital, and then the, the second week I, wor I worked part-time and gradually worked my way into it. I think if I would have went in sooner, that would have been the, the, the ticket, but I just thought I was working through, a, a, you know, this the sniffles and the cold, and I uh, didn't realize how bad it was getting. That was great to hear that those questions. Uh, he talked about the flu shot, you guys. He said why he took the flu shot two weeks earlier and then he came down with this pneumonia. What happened? Well, there's, there's really no correlation or causal effect of the flu shot in getting sick. The flu shot or the nasal mist protects you from getting the influenza. It does not cause it. That's one of these urban myths or, or legends that uh, crops up, so we need to debunk that. Yeah. Uh, Brian, you, you would confirm that comment? Yeah, I would agree, yeah, yes, I would. The, the, the issue is, though, he had a common cold, is likely what he did, yes. and then he developed a bacterial pneumonia yes. afterwards. Yes. What would you... What, what, I, I would think so. It, uh, it may not 
I don't know if he was confirmed with influenza or not with his pneumonia eventually. He was not. Yeah, it, so it, it probably was, uh, he got debilitated or got down, run down, uh, had the shot, but then got a, had probably had a cold and then uh, developed pneumonia. Clear, uh, clear it up for me. Uh, people think, that, what, what is the influenza? And they talk about influenza when they have diarrhea and, and then what about these other colds? What's a cold versus the influenza? And then where does that fit with bacterial pneumonia? Yeah. A lot of viruses uh, can cause colds. Several different viruses can cause the common cold that, uh, that we get. Uh, influenza, a special strain of uh, a virus that uh, usually comes every year, rolls through. In, in, in um, South Dakota, in this area, it's freezing between October and April and that, November and April in that area that'll, that'll come. That's why we try to stress to get the, the flu vaccine. And different strains occur uh, of it. It changes a little bit. They try to figure out what's the best vaccine for it. Uh, uh, so the influenza vaccine is still uh, very important to, uh, to get. Uh, but but person can get run down and get pneumonia for many other causes. So there are other causes of pneumonia. I mean, the yes. pneumonia that generally comes on the heels of a cold of some kind, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You get run down, you get uh, usually more bacteria in the throat and might aspirate that, get it in your lungs and, uh, and develop uh, pneumonia in that regard. Uh, different types of pneumonia, there's uh, atypical pneumonia called mycoplasma, there's uh, bacterial pneumonia, staph, strep, uh, several other different kinds of pneumonia that, uh, that we may get. Add to that, Lon. Well, he's, he's right about the virus. Uh, there's just uh, hundreds and hundreds of different uh, viruses out there, and they hit about this time of year. There's the rhinoviruses, the coronaviruses, the adenoviruses. But the main one, the mother of all these respiratory viruses. The, the mother believe, of all viruses. Well, the, 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 the tricky one. <laughs> the the mean one, one. The one that causes the most problems is the influenza. We have influenza A and B, and we really track that. We get specimens from all across the state. We analyze them in the state labs send them to CDC, we always try and stay one step ahead. But this is a virus that's constantly evolving, constantly changing, which is why every year the flu vaccine has to change a little bit. And a percentage, a percentage of these people with a plain old uh, adeno, corona, all these other kind of viruses will come down with pneumonia, but more come down after influenza because it's just a bit meaner. Am it's, I wrong on that? Like what percentage of people will die from influenza in a year, do you know? Well, nationally, it's said that up to about 40,000 people in the United States die with influenza. But when we track it through death certificates, we find, like for example, last year, last season, we had 20 influenza deaths. Those were confirmed with a test. There's many more out there that are just we die didn't. and end up with something else. But what really concerns me is that of our 20 deaths last year, four of them were children. So it's a, it, it's, it's a wicked virus. Uh, and and mm. do, they, do they always have a bacteria pneumonia that follows it, that kills them? Oftentimes they do, oftentimes they do. Any comment there, Brian? No. The only thought I have is the, um, how many of those 20 were also young, healthy people? Uh, the, the four children that died, uh, they all had some underlying condition. So those people especially need to be targeted for the flu vaccine. Okay. So. 20 in South Dakota died last year that we know of for sure. Yes. As a result of influenza vaccine. Do you know of those 20? No, no, no. Of, uh, not, influ of influenza. Of the illness. Of the illness. Of the illness. Please, Rick. See, I was, but how many of those 20 had the flu shot? Um, Do you know? Two or three of them did. And the answer is that the flu shot doesn't always work, but it works pretty well. Well, yeah, the, the flu shot, it has its troubles. It's in, in healthy people, it's only about 60, 70 or percent efficacious. Sure. But in the elderly, mm -hmm. it's far less. It's mm -hmm. most efficacious among children. Mm -hmm. So children, they're Well, protected. and they're the, they're the brew pot, the, the, the Well, the, yeah, they're the, the big carriers, transmitters. The yeah. transmitters, so it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, let, so if I come in with a flu shot and I give it to everybody in the community, there's going to be 20 to 40 percent or 60 percent even in the elderly that may not have an immunity that works as a result. Well, a great immunity or, you know, they would have some protection. They'd still be sick. So they'd mm -hmm. be sick, but maybe not go to the hospital and maybe not die. So it affords them some protection, but not totally, okay. not, not total protection. All right. And before we go to questions, so what's herd immunity? That's when you have a large percent of the population. We like to say 90% of the population. So if I have it 
uh, the disease and uh, you're vaccinated and then if I cough on him, he won't get it and, and present it to anybody else. So you can just isolate the disease in a few people who neglect or can't get the vaccine. Okay. Brian, anything to add there? No. Got a question from Aladdin, Wyoming. Uh, difference between secondary and primary pulmonary hypertension. Is that related to viral infections or colds infections? And what in the heck is pulmonary hypertension, Brian? Uh, hypertension is elevated pressure, and usually the, uh, the way our blood flows in the lung uh, it comes pumped out to our body and it keeps pumping it. The oxygen gets taken up by our cells, and then the blood comes back to get more oxygen. It comes through the right side of the heart, which is a low pressure system, much like water going down a stream. Usually the pressure is 25 over 10, very low pressure into the lungs, picks up oxygen, comes back to the left side, and then pumped out to the body through the aorta and our vessels. That pressure, as we know, is 120 over, over 80. 120 over 80. Yeah. Now, pulmonary hypertension means high pressure on that right side. So suddenly the right side, not suddenly, but over time, is seeing blood pumped into the lung at a higher resistance and pressure, so that pressure can be high. And that's called pulmonary hypertension. Now, sure, her um, question was about yes. primary versus secondary. I mean, I know for a fact that if the heart fails, it can back up Yes. and the pressure on the right side can go up. Yes. Or people who have uh, emphysema, chronic yes. bronchitis, asthma, lung disease, yes. destroyed from you know, yes. uh, recurrent infections or, or smoking or whatever it might be, they can have pulmonary hypertension. What is, that secondary? Those are, those are usually secondary to, uh, to uh, lung diseases, uh, secondary to some other reason, muddle of blood clots to the lung, destroyed lung, um, left heart failure. Right. Uh, sleep apnea is one that's often unrecognized. Folks with sleep apnea that's untreated can develop uh, elevated right-sided pressure, so yeah. it's one we always screen for that. Low oxygen at night that tends to constrict, so hypoxemia, low oxygen at night, sleep apnea, chronic lung disease, or wow. chronic left-sided heart failure. So those are all secondary They're all causes secondary. of hypertension, pulmonary hypertension. Yeah. What's Pri primary? Primary is pretty, pretty rare and pretty uncommon. It just occurs with some type of a constriction of the vasculature, of the blood vessels uh, that lead the right side is pumping into the lung. It's pretty, and most of them are, most cases are gonna be secondary. Yeah, and not a lot of these are related to lung infections, I mean, uh, pneumonias. No, no, it'd be acute if it was. Most are, most are a bit of a chronic problem. Okay. Uh, unless one gets debilitated and then develops blood clots uh, because of the debilitation and then has secondary uh, elevated pressure because of that. Okay. Uh, mucus in the nose for an hour in the morning. What can he do to deal with this? That's a great question. I mean, we, there are many people have a lot of mucus. And, and most of that, I would say, is that first week or two after a cold. Yes. But the, when it's longer than that, it's generally allergic, wouldn't yes. you say? I think so. Yes, it is. And there's some debate as to what to treat, how to treat that as well. And. Uh, um, Ipatropium bromide, atrovent nasal spray has been uh, one that's been kind of recommended. Recommended uh, sometimes antihistamine sprays can be helpful. I like steroid uh, nasal sprays. Steroid too. nasal sprays can be sometimes helpful. Yep. Um, Very good. And, but if it's just the common cold, it's that first two weeks. There's not a whole lot we can do. There isn't. Yeah. Don't blow the nose because it rams right. it in the sinuses. You right. know, wipe gently. Right. Lots of fluid, steam, hot drinks. Yep. Lon, you have any? Uh, I, I'd ask you, but I think you're going to be not answering the mucus story, or do you? Well, that's out of the realm of public health, but when you have a lot of mucus and a lot of runny stuff coming out, yeah. and then we get to public health and it's wash your hands, and if you're sick, just stay home. You know, we used to push our kids to go to school. No that matter was what. A, yeah, no matter yeah. what, I, I'm guilty. I did that. Oh, you're all right. Get the, I mean, you know, the doctor's kids never got to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> but that was wrong. If the kid is sick, Particularly that first day or two when they've got a fever, I think they should stay. Yeah, home. because you're full of viruses. And if you've got it's mucus fever. and you're yeah. blowing your nose, what? Yeah, you need to exactly. wash your hands. Exactly. Blow it into a tissue, throw it away, and wash exactly. your hands. What about the the the, the sterile hand? Oh, the hand sanitizer. gel. Yeah, if you, if you can't wash your hands and then use the gel, use it use it religiously. Really take take good care of your hands. All right. Okay. Uh, from Sioux Falls, trivalent influenza vaccines is a, a another va, uh, v, uh, is a monovalent or bivalent or quadrivalent vaccine more effective. No, we just have the trivalent. Now. So explain 
what are we vaccinating against? We're pre it's a guess, isn't it? Well, and trivalent no, no, means... No, Rick, it's better than a guess. Okay. You know, that's why we collect these specimens and send them into the CDC and look very carefully what's, what's circulating in the southern hemisphere. But um, the trivalent, it, it, it just means there's three different viral types in the vaccine, 1B and 2A. And there's an A, an H1A, and an H3A. And that's it's, this year's. That's this year's. That's this year's. The monovalent, we only used that back in uh, 2009 when we had the H1N1, the so-called pandemic, mm -hmm. that we needed that extra shot that year. So we had monovalent that one year, but that was a, a once in a 40 year thing. So every year it's these three viruses. Because a we, B and two A's. We, were, we were getting ready for a, a major epidemic. Yeah, we had, a, we, we had a new virus come. We had a new virus come. We had to whip something up. And we did. Yep. The, the question I have about that is it is done by a corporation, a, a business that is pr for profit. Mm -hmm. It's international. A lot of it's in France. Uh, we have an epidemic in our world. We may not get it. It may not come our way. It may be all saved for Europe or they may not make enough because it isn't profitable or shouldn't the government step in? I mean, you know, I'm I'm asking this because I don't know anything about it. It's just that it always makes me think if there's a place for government, maybe in medicine, maybe this is where that could well, be. What, what, what the government is doing is pushing the research, helping the research, setting priorities. You may remember before the pandemic, way back when George Bush was president, one of the things that he fostered was uh, cell-based uh, influenza vaccine, because now we make it in chicken eggs. You know, we've got a 60-year-old technology there, and that's why the, 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 the process is so cumbersome and the vaccine isn't as efficient as, as it could be. Mm -hmm. What we need is the cell-based, and we have that. It's uh, being developed close to where I studied in Research Triangle really? and I, um, in, in North Carolina, close to Chapel Hill there. Um, and so that's, that, that'll be a better vaccine, more efficient, uh, be able to make it quicker, should be safer. My prediction is that it will be some kind of epidemic in the years to come, I don't know how many years, that, that could wipe out half of humanity like it did in the 1500s. We're all afraid of that, that's potential, and it will be the vaccine that will protect us. Uh, any comment, Brian? Well, it sounds like you went to the movie Contagion, Rick. What did you think about that movie? I thought it was a great movie. It told the story very well. A little over the top, but, but plausible. You know, it's yeah. a, a worst case scenario there. Yeah. We, we have to think about those worst case scenarios. All right, I don't want to cause panic. Brian, any comment? No. No comment. Okay. okay. <laughs> We've got, uh, our crew went out this last week and asked several people about their experiences with the flu, flu shots what they do to avoid catching the flu, and if, if they had any questions about the flu. Um, of course, we try to eat healthy, um, you know, wash our hands and be as clean as possible. Um, as soon as someone got sick in the house, we stripped the beds and washed everything um, to help with that. Um, and of course, staying on uh, exercising and just trying to get our rest is very important. I guess, you know, you get the flu shot hoping that you're not going to get sick. So when you do get sick, you wonder if they're related or not, um, if it's maybe a different strain that we got or if it was because of something we ate. But I, I know that's not the case because it was spread out within about six days we all got sick. Um, so I'm just wondering kind of to differentiate what is a flu shot helping um, versus, I guess, the other sickness that we may possibly get. This is great fun to have those kind of questions. So does the flu shot make you sick, Brian? It, it, there's, a, there's a small chance of reaction, but most of the time, I think individuals do real well with it. Do you have any comment on that? Comment about well, well, yeah, yeah, you could get a little red and, and, and a sore yeah. arm. Very well, rarely there's, bit, yeah. there's some side effects to it, but those are extremely yeah. rare. Usually it's the sore arm for an hour or so. How about the flu that follows, you know, the next day or the couple of days later? No, there's no relation, Rick. So, just... so now my patient is asked by the nurse, how are you feeling? Well, I've got a little runny nose. I feel a little bit bad. Okay, we're not going to give you the flu shot. Well, why is that, Doc? Why can't I have the flu shot? Because if I give you the flu shot and you come down with this flu that you're starting to get, you're going to blame the flu shot and never take it again. That's my answer to him. Well, give me the shot. Is that an inappropriate response to the patient? Well, I'd say give them the shot. Give them the shot. You don't know what they have, really, unless you culture it out of them right then right. and there. No, give them the shot. So 
How do we do in South Dakota as far as uh, taking the flu shot? Oh, well, let me brag. We're number one in the country. Oh, we are? Yep, yep. We're number one in the country. So what percentage and, and what's the worst oh, percentage? Oh, gosh. Well, uh, South Dakota's the best and, oh, gosh, you caught me by surprise here. I think it's Nevada is maybe one of the lowest. Uh, but all of our groups are high. Our youngest children, very good. First in the country. Overall, we're first in the country. Our elderly people, first in the country. We. Uh, our, our school-aged kids are a little bit down. We're not in the top tier in that, but South Dakota is excellent. We have a good tradition of people recognizing the risk. I think flu shots are accessible in this state. Uh, people get them, and you know, we're very proud of that. We've got a good tradition to build on. Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of the state health mm -hmm. department and the good physicians that we have in our, our st uh, st state as well. well and, the, the care too, and the care providers. And the pharmacists. Yeah, they're giving a an job. right yeah. and left. Yeah. And, and the population. Yeah. I was going to say that that last lady there talked about uh, uh, washing hands, uh, which I don't think was really um, talked about that much before. It was always don't cough outwardly, put your, cover your face, but uh, actually it's uh, transmitted by the hands uh, quite a bit. And so the, the, the washing with uh, soap and water, but also these alcohol ones work well because you can set them around, they're frequent, uh, easy to use. And so I'm really impressed with how that uh, seems to be gotten out in the uh, community now about washing hands. Makes frequently. a lot of difference. A lot of difference. Yeah. We have another question from the street. I do mostly sleep. That's a big thing. Um, I don't get enough sleep. So that's usually, I think, what the, probably the big problem is. But um, other than that, just um, being healthy, eating, working out, exercising, and of course, washing hands. I don't know the, really the differences between the types of flu. So I guess that would be my only question. So she asked about she said something about sleeping. Brian, now you're a sleep expert. Um, does getting enough sleep make a difference? Oh, well, it does. I think if you get run down, uh, tired, fatigued, you're, you're maybe more prone to pick up, uh, pick up a bug. Uh, Your defenses go down. Defenses go down. Immunity might not be as sharp. Is there a good epidemiology study to show that that's the case? Well, well, there are. But, and she talked about healthy lifestyle, good sleep. But yeah. the thing I would add is smoking. Don't smoke yes, because that's yes. going to make you more susceptible to all these right. viruses too. That just rips apart and shreds your respiratory right. epithelial and makes you very susceptible. I remember the big the story of the cilia. Yeah. There's all these little thing, these little fingers that are constantly sweeping like a waves of ocean, moving the mucus out of yes. the uh, the lung and m moving it out so that you can clean out your lungs if it's if you're not smoking. But if yeah. you're smoking yeah. it 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 stops the cilia from working. If you stop smoking, the cilia get working again. So any so comment about that? No, I agree totally. Yeah. All right, let's take that next man on the street question, woman on the street, man, woman. I have never gotten the flu. Do you get the flu shot? I got the flu shot this year, but I did not last year. Well, I try to exercise regularly, um, eat a healthy, moderate diet, um, get eight hours of sleep, try to at least every night and do anything else I can. In a facility I've worked prior places too with a lot of people, I think the exposure probably maybe gives me a little added you know, exposure before, maybe, but at least I've been taking the flu shot. As you get a little bit older, you start to consider things you don't want to get it, so if it's a preventative thing, well, it's worth a try. What determines what flu virus that they're going to use? I mean, what's it going to matter if something new comes along? You know, what's the point of taking a shot if it's only for a few select viruses? What's the point? It really makes me think about exposure. That gentleman was in a lot of exposure. I mean, the physicians, uh, healthcare providers, nurses, uh, nurse practitioners, PAs, are all exposed to a lot of people. Uh, and uh, guys in lab, you know, you never get exposed. So, I mean, it's the exposure. I'm just joking. You probably hang with a fair number of people. We're all exposed, yeah. particularly if you've got kids that come home from school. What, how important is that exposure, do you think, Brian? It's important, I think, if, especially if something's going around. If you're sick, uh, if you're on the fever, got a cold, it'd be good to stay away till that fever goes down for at least 24 hours before you go back to school or you go back even to the workplace if you think you really got chills and a fever so you don't spread it around. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I agree. And schools and daycares are the amplifiers yeah. of the virus. In South Dakota, we, we track school absenteeism due to illness. 
and we can see when the school absenteeism starts going up, sure as shooting, within a week or two, we're going to start going to see more hospitalizations among middle-aged and elderly people. They just you know, get it first, and they amplify it and bring it in, into the community. Well, what's the word vector mean? Um, well, we use that as a word for um, like mosquitoes that carry disease, bite you, and, and cause it. I, I kind of see a child as a, as a vector. They bite you, and <laughs> they do other things like that. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, they're susceptible, and then they don't have good hygiene. Like kids, like we talked about the runny nose. They'll wipe it on their hand, and then they'll wipe it on the chair or the doorknob. So you really got to protect your kids. You know, build a, a, a safety zone around them, especially if you've got a little baby less than six months in your, in, in your household because they can't have the vaccine. So you just have to build a, a, uh, yeah, a protective around. bubble around them almost. Yeah. You mentioned a good point about daycares and nursing homes too. If you're sick, why mm. stay away from those uh, till, you're, till you're better so you don't transmit well, that in. Well, the nursing homes have caught on to that. Like when I visit a nursing home during the winter, there's always a sign, there's always a mask yeah. and the hand gel and okay. warnings. And, and if you're sick, don't even go there. Don't, don't go even, there. Yeah, don't bring it to the elderly. Yeah, I think when we were panicking, well, we weren't panicking, but we were preparing for the potential of a dangerous epidemic, we all learned wash our hands, cover our coughs, and if we're sick, stay home. I think those are the, the, right. the primary right. issues we need to, we can't say it enough. No, it may sound boring it. because you've heard it so many times. There's another question from them, a man on the street. I've never had the flu and uh, I haven't had the flu shot in a couple of years, but I did the flu mist like, like two years ago. Honestly, I don't know how I don't get sick because I don't have a very good sleeping schedule and I'm obviously because of school and stuff, but I just kind of get lucky. I guess my immune system is stronger than others. <laughs> Last year I had a friend who came down with the flu and then later ended up getting like walking pneumonia too. It was kind of like a two in one deal, but, <laughs> but yeah, she got, she was pretty sick. I guess I have wondered if that's true or not, if you can actually get the flu from the flu shot. <laughs> yeah, flu from the flu shot, we hear it again. What's the answer? No. No, no you don't get the flu from the flu shot. In fact, it protects you but it doesn't protect you perfectly. And there are other things that you could get uh, a cold and then subsequent pneumonia from. Right. Anything, any other comment that you want to Just to, to comment on the, the myths, that's the live, the, that's, uh, that's the live. virus should not be given if you're immunosuppressed or uh, have a tense, have a weakened immune system. Yeah. Or if you're pregnant. Or if you're pregnant. Or yeah. if you're old. Or if you're pregnant. Yeah, or if you're old. Up to so, so years. Yeah, yeah, so there's lots of options. The the flu mist, yep. you squirt in the nose, that's been out a couple years. And now this year we have the uh, interdermal. Yep. So that's so, so there's all kinds of options out there. Okay, uh, now, but you can't get the flu nasal spray if you're older than 49. 49. 49. Because? It, it, it just hasn't been tested in that population. Yeah. All right. And that's a different system than the other flu shot. I mean, that's a attenuated versus a dead virus, right, right? right? Explain that. Well, attenuated, it's a live virus, but it's been weakened. It can't cause disease. All it can do is just trigger an immune response in you. Um, supposedly, it's better. Because you have a better immune response. Yeah, yeah, they've, been, they, they've shown very good efficacy with, with, with the flu mist. So I would encourage people to get that. If they can't, if you're if, under 49. If, if, if you can, if you're, not pregnant, yeah. yeah, but yeah. Not, and not pregnant. Yeah. Okay. And it, it's good for people that have the needle phobia. Right. Believe me, it's just choo -choo 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 -choo. and then. It. Yeah. It's more expensive yeah. though. Uh, a bit more expensive, yeah. All right, the, but uh, the shot, the typical shot is from dead virus. It is. So you cannot, a killed virus, you cannot get a, a viral infection from, could they have messed up and not killed the virus? I mean, no, I so. no, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get the cold. Don't even bring that. Up. Yeah. You know, there's, there's hundreds of viruses out there yeah. and, and you could get a cold virus yeah. and then people think, oh, yeah. I've got this. Exactly. People even think, oh, my tummy is gurgling. I've got the flu. You know, just, you know, you can't get it. There's been just there's just been so many studies on this. And right. And actually, the, uh, the diarrhea illness that gets going periodically through the seasons, sometimes in the summer, mm -hmm. those, vir those are viral diarrhea illnesses, but they're not influenza. Influenza no, is a right. cold, I mean, a, right. a respiratory. respiratory. So it's yep. nose, respiratory virus. throat, yep. Yep. lung. Right. right. Any more uh, man on the street questions? I've been able to avoid it for quite a number of years because I always take the flu shot and I've been fortunate. 
ever since that swine flu thing came out, maybe 10, 15 years ago, he's taken it every single year. Well, you know, the question that you run into most of the time in your mind is the difference between a flu and a cold. So what's fl swine, swine flu? Well, pigs get flu too, and so do birds. Birds are actually the repository in nature of influenza. Pigs get it. In fact, in the past six years, there have been 34 cases, documented cases of swine flu in the United States. In fact, one was right here in Brookings. Okay. Yeah, so, and this year we've got an uptick in them. Iowa had a cluster in north central Iowa, just east of uh, Sioux Falls a ways. Uh, West Virginia, Maine, Pennsylvania, Indiana, um, some activity in, in, in Florida. So this is quite worrisome. Um, we've got a, a triple reassortment swine flu that people are getting and it's transmissible person to person. The cases in Iowa were three kids uh, through three young children. And, and it's respiratory illness. It's, re it's honest to goodness influenza, but it's a novel virus. It's something new. It's this mutant uh, strain. So and our flu shot isn't going to protect us no, from that one. No, unfortunately and not. And it could be a bad illness. Well, it's been called moderate to mild. Moderate to oh, mild. Okay. But we're watching it very, very carefully. All right. Any any other comments? No, there was some concern about uh, about eating meat at that time. For that, that's nothing to do with. No, it just happened no. to pass through and uh, yeah. no, to lay that to rest. Uh, yeah. yeah, everybody was yeah. afraid of eating swine, and that had yeah, nothing, we, to, do know, nothing to do with it. No, nothing to do with that. And then one year it was turkey because they had yeah. a, avian, avian flu, flu right. in Asia, which is still there. And you know, just yes. you know, keep calm. Just. It's, it's the coughing that spreads it, not the right. meat. Sing. They talk about uh, if you go to choir and somebody's got the cold and they're singing, sure. it spreads it. Have you heard that? I read yep. an article yep. on that. That'll do, it. What, that'll do it. So if, you, if you're a singer and you're, you're sick, don't go to yeah. choir practice. For, just for talking and breathing, it's about one yard or one meter mm -hmm. or so out. But if you're sneezing, you can shoot a sneeze out yes. you know, quite, quite, quite yes. a ways. And, and if you're a loud singer like my middle son, he'll just spread that illness like everything else. Yes. <laughs> we have one more person on the street there. That's the way to put it, person on the street. I don't get the flu shot. I've had it three or four times. Every time I've gotten it, I've gotten the flu. That was the only time I did get the flu shot and then I got the flu and I'd never gotten it again and I haven't had the flu shot. And every time I've gotten a flu shot, uh, I mean, I've never gotten the flu. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's because of the flu shot though. Comments. Well, I don't know how, how many times we can say it, you don't get flu from the flu shot. It's this urban myth, this legend that just grows and we try and bat it down and uh, need, people have studied this you know, ad, ad nauseum, and you don't get flu from the, from the flu shot. Okay. Brian? No, I agree, and I think the, we've seen a few people, young people uh, in the last year or so, as well as elderly, that uh, they get the flu that haven't had the shot can really get sick if you have the influenza roll through, so you're no question to get the flu shot. I mean, they've got huge studies that have yeah. shown that if this population, you know, 90% yeah. of them have got the flu shot, yeah. the illness sweeps through that community compared to this community that didn't and there's a lot of difference. Do you have good numbers to state that very thing? Well, no, we don't do that kind of research in South Dakota. We track it, but we don't actually do those kinds of... But we've seen that. Of, I mean, that studies, those oh, kinds oh, of studies yeah. have been done. Oh, yeah, many times. All right. The mother is allergic to eggs. Can this person have the flu shot? Egg allergies. Well, that's changed. CDC's given new guidance this year. And what the word now is, if you have severe egg allergies, and then you go to your allergist and uh, discuss it with them. But if you eat a scrambled egg or a half raw egg and you get hives, you can go get the flu shot. There's only tiny little micrograms of egg albumin still in that flu vaccine. Okay. So you're, you're fine. We're backing down from this, this egg allergy, absolutely no flu shot. All so right. that's changing a little bit. So okay. check with your doc. Well, what about, uh, let's talk about mercury or poisons in the flu shot. I mean, everybody is, uh, I mean, there's this big, what do they call it, false, Thimerosal. Yeah, thimerosal story. What, tell us about that. Well, um, in the past, oh, dozen years or so, the mercury has been taken out of the flu vaccine. There's still uh, one kind of flu vaccine, the kind that comes in the multi-dose big vial that has thimerosal in it. Um, pediatric doses that most kids get are thimerosal free. If you want a thimerosal free vaccine, just ask for it. But are you afraid of thimerosal? Uh, well, it's mercury, yeah. It's, you know, in, in public health and medicine, we don't want to inject anything that's 
not good, so with all standards, it should be taken out so you can get rid of it if you're... But the data says that it protects uh, the, the, uh, the vaccine from uh, getting infected. It protects, it's an anti-infectious portion, and the, the, I've heard experts that say that if you balance the good and the bad, it's a push. It's equal. It's well, other than a few different brands of flu vaccine, thimerosal is out of the vaccine supply now. So, let's so it's, 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 it's almost an issue of the past. All right. Yeah. Brian, any comment? No, yeah. All right. How effective is pneumonia vaccine? Brian, you have a comment? It's uh, fairly effective. I think there's, there still can be cases it prevents against strep infection. That's what um, you can still get pneumonia from many other um, types of organisms, staph, uh, gram-negative infections, viral infections, atypical mycoplasma infection wouldn't protect, but it's a, it's a pneumococcal vaccine, which is another word for strep, so it's, it's uh, fairly effective against that. Uh, do, you, do you know the exact, uh, or the, some percentage on that? But I, I think it, it's, it's, it's the one that's fairly yeah, standard for yeah. that. You, get, you can get one shot and then you can get a booster. One uh, time. Yeah, one time. And I generally uh, encourage it, what, 40 yep. or 50 years of age? Yes. And then you get a booster at 65, government will pay for one booster. Yep. Is that, <laughs> yeah, that's what I've, I've learned. Any, any pneumococcal count? vaccine. After about yeah. five pneumococcal years, get, vaccine. A, yep, get a pneumococcal vaccine. That's well, right. Since, since you're talking about cost, I, uh, I want to add that uh, flu shots for children are covered by the, by the, by the state, will pay for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. There may be a little charge when you go in for your, your clinic for an administration. If you go to a public health clinic, it's it's free. Absolutely. So you you there there should be no impediment to getting your kid vaccinated. All right. Good good point. Uh, flu shot in October. Will it be protective in April? It will. It will. Yeah. If if the vi the virus that's circulating in April is still the same as the one that's mm -hmm. in the flu shot. All right. But yeah, it lasts. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, can you tell me if there is some side effect of the flu shot called Guillain-Barre syndrome? Brian? It's, uh, it's been reported and there's, uh, um, I don't know, the, do you know the exact percent or so? It's, it's about one in a million. Yeah, it's really yeah. rare. Yeah. Extremely it's rare. Really rare. There's some, I've heard that the incidence of Guillain-Barre, which is also called, I mean, it's spelled Gillian, yep. it's pronounced Guillain, French. or French, French polio, yep. and it's a paralysis that ascends, yep. and in most cases, it didn't, then it goes away. Yep. Uh, but that occurs spontaneously, it's probably a viral infection yep. itself, yeah, it and the correlation of it being related to flu, uh, or any, any shot is, has been dis disputed. Well, it's most commonly associated with the Campylobacter infection. And we have hundreds of cases of those every year in South Dakota. That's the bacteria that, that you get from eating, you know, undercooked chicken. Okay. So ch look to chicken as the cause, <laughs> not our flu vaccine. Wow. As, as our man on the street interviews showed, most of us recognize that one of the best practices you can have to help prevent spread of colds and flu is to wash your hands. The staff at Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals in Philadelphia produced a very creative video to help remind us of the best hand-washing choreography. Want to see it, but they're scared to ask Before you touch your patients, 
you must do this one task. You wanna be clean, better do what you can. So wash them. Okay, you guys can sit down again. I, uh, dancing oh. was really great fun watching you guys. And got, catch your breath. And uh, that was fun. All right. Thank you, Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. That was, makes the point. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions, you guys. Uh, can flu cause any after effects, long-term side effects to the lungs, Brian? Um, uh, most of the time we see it if you have uh, serious pneumonia with it. And we've had uh, a few cases of that long-term would be uh, results of that, I would think, in the lung. Uh, but, but oftentimes you get the flu, pneumonia, that usually clears up. And reverses almost completely. Usually does, yep. Uh, but when you do have a side effect, is it scarring and then you know, kind of a thing like you would have with uh, emphysema, chronic bronchitis? No, no, just less it's, uh, less it's just an uh, uh, unfortunate case that's just extremely, extremely... Um, Diffuse. All right. All right. Uh, any comment about flu mm -hmm. side effects? Okay. What about flu being transmitted by sexual contact? No. Mon Chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV are transmitted by sexual contact. I guess if your partner has the virus, is shedding it, and you have sex, you could get it, but it's, it's from the kissing. Yeah. From the yeah, not from the genital that. stuff. So. All right. You said the word genital. I didn't. I thought I'd point that oh, out. Oh, is that, uh, was I supposed to say that? No, no, that's uh, just kidding. Oh. <laughs> I get bleeped here. <laughs> I go bleep. Can flu be transmitted uh, by, or caught by dust in an environment? Uh, people work in dust. A yeah. lot of dust, uh, farmers in particular are in grain bins. 
people who are constantly sweeping lots of dust in the air. What, what kind of problems can occur, and do you get a cold or an infection? Can you get in riding those kinds of dust? I, I don't think so. Uh, the, the, we do see serious problems related to that. Most of them are, are funguses and uh, unusual type of, uh, of, um, of uh, not bacteria, not viral usually ones, but fungal type organisms that might be in there and you clean out a, an area. We had a, uh, some young fellows from Iowa that were cleaning out uh, ducks and, uh, and tearing down an area and it really got diffuse. Uh, Infection from uh, from uh, over dust. over breathing and uh, just uh, a load of uh, fungal type organisms. So you want to the, wear yeah. You masks. want to be very careful when you're tearing down a building or you're cleaning out uh, uh, places that uh, may have uh, infections related okay. to. Yeah, uh, and then finally, I want to ask the both of you, uh, what? Uh, how do you know that this might be turning into a bacterial process and you should go in and see your doctor? What clues might you have? You've got a common yeah. cold, you're running your yeah. cold, what is a clue? Usually you'll see, uh, you start feeling better and then you might be feeling worse. Um, fever is always a sign that uh, something's a significant. A new fever, recurrent. A new fever, a recurrent fever. If you have discomfort in your chest, if you're starting to cough up something different, uh, more, more productive, or you'll run a temperature, feel ill, feel weak. Um, if you're lightheaded, um, if you need pain in the chest, um, then you wanna, wanna get checked out. Get in quickly, yep. Yep. because sometimes the yep. pneumonia can gallop. Yes, yep. and it well, can weaken, uh, weaken you enough when you're sick, you can get a bacterial infection on top of it. Yep. All right, we've got a minute left. Take home messages. Lon. Well, I want to hit vaccination again. If you're high risk for almost anything, you need the flu shot, and now is the time to get it. Flu really hasn't hit us now mid-December in South Dakota, so get it, and then... It's coming. It's coming, so get your flu vaccine. All right, and the flu, and and it's not expensive. And if you're a kid, it's free. Yeah, it's about twenty bucks if you're an adult, and a lot of insurance companies and Medicaid and Medicare take care of it. And if you're a kid in South Dakota, you can get it for free. Right. Take home message, Brian. I like uh, the emphasis they placed on washing hands. I think that Jefferson was was excellent. Uh, soap and water is is nice, but it's it's hard to do a lot of people that way. And I know we go in the exam room before we see um, see each patient. We like the alcohol one, just squirt, do it, examine. When we're done, we do it again. So those we see sitting around restaurants and, and facilities, I think it's excellent. And uh, see a lot of people using them. They're quick and fast. They're and quick and fast. They're quick and, and fast. And, and do you don't have the cracked hands that the you can have hands, yeah. that, that can yeah. result from from uh, uh, washing your hands time after time yeah. after time. It's a lot better for me. Yeah, I was impressed with people on the street as well that they, their commercial, they, they uh, added that and talked they about added how that. they did it. Yeah. That's right. Well, um, colds and flu make us miserable. We soon get to the point where we want something, anything to help us. There are treatments that can make us feel better, but they are not always the same. Help me feel better, please. They ask every winter as we see minor epidemics of upper respiratory infections. That is what healthcare providers want to do, but the answer is complicated. Good treatment turns around the careful use of antibiotics, but only when things start to deteriorate. Let me explain. The classic symptoms of the cold start with a sore throat and a fever for about two days, followed by a runny nose and a cough for about two weeks. Our very best treatment, although somewhat inadequate, is still plenty of cough drops and enough Tylenol. Please remember antibiotics do not alter this course and do not make the patient feel better. In fact, they can make the person feel worse if you count all the problems that can result from antibiotics. Antibiotics can cause severe allergic reaction, but this is not the worst of it. In far too many people, antibiotics cause the destruction of the normal flora, which is that good and protective bacteria that happily coexist with us, living on the skin, the nasal mucosa, the colon, and for women, the vagina. Their destruction can cause an invasion of bad bacteria or fungus, resulting in very bothersome symptoms, and even a life-threatening invasion, invasive colon infection. It has become clear as we've advanced science that it is best to avoid antibiotics unless they're absolutely necessary. So when is that? On occasion, a bacterial lung infection, a pneumonia, will follow on the heels of a cold. We know that this kind of infection can also be life-threatening 
and does respond to antibiotics. The clue to this kind of problem is when a second fever follows up after four or five days of the cold symptoms, especially with chills, a changing productive cough, and a big time worsening of overall conditioning. Well, why not give an antibiotic early in the course of a viral infection to prevent that life-threatening bacterial pneumonia that can follow? Numerous studies have shown that this method doesn't work. An antibiotic taken too early does not prevent a subsequent bacterial pneumonia and simply can result in a pneumonia that's resistant to that antibiotic. Say it again, for people who are struggling with a cold, antibiotics do not help. But if after a number of days things start deteriorating, get in to see your doctor. And I personally thank the two of you so much for spending your time and getting here. That wraps up our show. I want to thank my studio guest, Lon Keitlinger, the South Dakota State Epidemiologist, Dr. Brian Hurley, pulmonologist from Avera, and thank you for watching. Until next time, stay healthy out there, people. Funding for this program is provided in part by... Avera is a proud sponsor of On Call on South Dakota Public Television. And by... The South Dakota Foundation for Medical Care, the Medicare Quality Improvement Organization for South Dakota. Additional funding provided by... Dakota Care, the Brookings Health System, Regional Health, the South Dakota American College of Physicians, and Swiftel Communications. Closed captioning for On Call is provided by the generous support of Avera, the Brookings Health System, and Fishback Financial Corporation.